Hi, I'm Maria Lang, a Solutions Architect at LOSAN. Every IoT application starts with devices and the data they generate. However, devices connect and report data in lots of different ways. You have to normalize the data, store it, access it, and create value from it, all the while ensuring that your data is secure during transmission and processing, which is a lot of work. This is where LoSAN's data and device management comes in. So let's go ahead and dive into the platform and take a closer look. Throughout this video, I will be working off of the LoSAN Industrial Equipment Monitoring Application template, which can be found inside of the LoSAN Application Template Library. When starting out in LoSAN, the first step is to create a digital clone of your device in the platform. Now there are several different classifications of devices. The first and most common is a standalone device. Now this has the ability to report state on its own. Maybe that's via MQTT or the REST API. The second are gateways. So gateway devices connect directly to LOSANT and can report data or send commands on their own behalf or on behalf of a peripheral device. Now a peripheral device has to use a gateway to get data to the cloud, so it's not able to connect to the internet on its own. This would be something like a Bluetooth sensor. Then we have our edge compute device. Now your edge compute device actually has the LoSAN edge agent installed on it and it's able to run edge workflows without an internet connection. The final device is a system device and this is a special um, LoSAN type of device and it doesn't actually receive any data from a device in the field it actually aggregates the inherited data of children devices. So once a device is created in LoSAN, like this generator here, you can open it up and come down to, to the bottom and you'll see device tags. Now device tags are metadata values, metadata information that is unique to the device you're working on. And this allows for querying of devices further on in your solution. It also allows for easier pinpointing of the device itself. Now attributes up at the top, if we click into this, this is attributes control what data is recorded on the device. This is information that would be reported and updated on a regular basis. It could be a string, a number, a GPS location, Boolean, or a blob. And again, this is information that is up being updated on a regular basis. Now over on the right, what you see here is the device log. And it is actually the data coming into the platform and being recorded to the device in real time. Now, not only is it showing you the information that's being recorded to these attributes, it's also telling you how it came into LoSAN and what workflow it, the data went through and then reported state to the device. So there are actually two core ways to store data inside of LoSAN, and we just talked about attributes. Now the second one are data tables. Now this is custom data that's associated with your application and your devices. And where attributes were updated and adjusted on a regular basis, data tables are a great way to store static or semi-static information. We're gonna jump into this warning and alarms table which has several different input columns. So the input columns 
is information that is updated by the data coming into LOSANT. The updated at and created columns are auto-generated by LOSANT itself. If you click into one of the rows, you'll see the row details. And I'd like to call out that this is required. And actually, all of these inputs are required. So when you are building a data table, you have the option to say whether a column is required or not required. And it just depends on your solution. However, in order for a row to be recorded in LOSANT, all required values must be reported or inputted. So if you're missing one of these values, a row is not going to be created. If you want to add a row manually, you can do that up here in the corner. You also have the ability to add rows inside of the workflow engines. So now that we've covered how data is stored in LOSANT, let's talk about how data gets into LOSANT. And there are several ways that occurs. The first one is directly through the MQTT broker, where you can create an access key in secret and give that to the device itself, and it will have a direct connection into the platform. The second is through webhooks. Now this is going to generate a unique URL that you can provide to a third party in order to send data into LOSANT. And it's actually using the LOSANT REST API. Finally, we have direct integrations. Now this is, this will create a direct integration to a third party device management utility. And you can utilize, you can do this through MQTT, Google PubSub, Particle, or Ruba Meridian. So that covers data and device management. And again, the two core ways to store data is on device attributes or in device data tables. And we also saw the main ways to get data into the platform directly through our MQTT broker, our REST interface, a webhook, or direct integration. If you would like to learn more, I would recommend looking into LOSANT University, which provides a deeper dive into what I covered today. You can also explore our documentation and forums. If you would like to start working in LOSANT, you can do that by creating a Sandbox account. Mm -hmm.